Chapter Eleven of the Life of Benjamin Franklin. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Life of Benjamin Franklin by Samuel G. Goodrich. Chapter Eleven. Spence's Experiments in Electricity. Franklin repeats them makes important discoveries letters to collinson experiment with the kite publication of his letters anecdote of the abbey nolet fame of franklin elected a member of the royal society it was in the year seventeen forty six that franklin first attended to the branch of philosophy in which he afterwards became so distinguished during that year he was in boston and there met with a dr spence who showed him some experiments in electricity it was a subject altogether new to him and though the experiments were not very well performed they surprised and pleased him if you take a stick of sealing wax or a glass tube or a piece of amber which has been a long time untouched and bring it near some small pieces of paper chaff or other light substance it produces no impression upon them but if you first rub lightly and briskly the wax the tube or the amber with a piece of dry woolen cloth or catskin and then bring it near any of these light substances you will find that they fly to it and remain upon it the power which attracts these substances and which is excited by the rubbing is called electricity it is so called from a greek word which signifies amber the substance in which this power was first observed amber is a brittle mineral substance of a yellow and sometimes a reddish brown color it is found in several countries in europe and has recently been found in the united states at cape sable in maryland this is the substance with which the first electrical experiment was performed ages ago by a greek philosopher of the name of thales several centuries passed without anything being known upon this subject beyond the fact that these substances possess this power at length it began to attract the attention of modern philosophers in 1742 several ingenious germans engaged in the subject and the results of their researches astonished all europe they obtained large apparatus by means of which they were enabled to collect large quantities of the electric fluid and produce several wonders which had been before unobserved these experiments excited the curiosity of other philosophers mr peter collinson fellow of the royal society of london about the year seventeen forty five sent to the library company of philadelphia a glass tube with some account of its use in making such experiments franklin eagerly seized the opportunity of repeating those which he had seen at boston and by much practice acquired great readiness in performing those of which they had an account from england he was soon enabled to make a number of important discoveries and his house was for some time continually full of people who came to see the new wonders his observations upon the subject were from time to time communicated to his friend collinson in a series of letters the first of which is dated march twenty eighth seventeen forty seven these were read before the royal society where they were not at first thought worthy of such attention in the year seventeen forty nine franklin first suggested the idea of explaining the sameness of electricity with lightning a paper upon this subject which he wrote for mr kindersley was read before the members of the royal society and excited a hearty laugh but it was the lot of this neglected theory to be generally adopted by philosophers and to bid fair to endure for ages 
It was in the same year that Franklin started the plan of proving the truth of his doctrine by actually drawing down the lightning by means of sharp-pointed iron rods raised high into the clouds. It was not until the summer of 1752 that he was enabled to complete his grand discovery by actual experiment. The plan which he had first proposed was to erect a box on some high tower or other elevated place from which should rise a pointed iron rod. He thought that electrified clouds passing over it would impart a portion of their electricity which would be made evident by presenting a key or the knuckle to it. There was at this time in Philadelphia no opportunity of trying an experiment of the kind. But while Franklin was waiting for the erection of a sphere, it occurred to him that he might have a more ready access to the clouds by means of a common kite. He prepared a kite by fastening two cross sticks to a silk handkerchief, which would not suffer from the rain so much as paper. To the upright stick he affixed an iron point. The string was, as usual, of hemp, excepting the lower end, which was made of silk, because this substance does not give a free passage to the electricity. With this kite on the appearance of a thunderstorm, he went out into the commons with his son, to whom alone he had communicated his intentions. He placed himself under a shed to avoid the rain. His kite was raised. A thunder cloud passed over it, but no sign of electricity appeared. The experiment had almost been given up in despair when he perceived, in the loose fibers of the string, evident appearances of electricity. By continued observation the fact was most clearly proved, and the honor of establishing the sameness of electricity and lightning was won by Franklin. The letters which Franklin had sent to Mr. Collinson were published by that gentleman in a separate volume under the title of New Experiments and Observations on Electricity Made at Philadelphia in America. They were read with great eagerness and soon translated into different languages. A very incorrect French translation fell into the hands of the celebrated Buffon, who had been much pleased with it, and performed the experiments with success. A more correct translation was undertaken at his request and contributed much towards spreading a knowledge of Franklin's principles in France. His experiments were repeated by most of the distinguished philosophers throughout Europe. By these experiments, the truth of Franklin's doctrine was established in the firmest manner. When it could no longer be doubted, some men were anxious to take away from its merit. It was considered at that time rather mortifying to the European philosophers to admit that an American could make important discoveries which had escaped their notice. The Abbe Nolet, preceptor in natural philosophy to the royal family of France, was exceedingly offended at the publication of Franklin's letters. He had himself written about electricity, and could not at first believe that such a work had really come from America. He said it must have been composed by his enemies in Paris to oppose his system. Afterwards, having been assured that there really existed such a person as Franklin at Philadelphia, he published a volume of letters in defense of his own ideas upon the subject and denying the propositions of the American philosopher. Franklin thought at one time of writing a letter in reply to the Abbey, and actually began one. But on considering that any one might repeat his experiments, and ascertain for himself whether or not they were true, he concluded to let his papers shift for themselves, believing it was better to spend what time he could spare in making new experiments than in disputing about those already made. The event gave him no cause to repent of his silence. His friend Monsieur Leroy of the Royal Academy of Sciences took up his cause and refuted the Abbey. Franklin's volume was translated into the Italian, German, and Latin languages, and the doctrine it contained was, by degrees, generally adopted by the philosophers of Europe in preference to that of Nolet. 
What gave his book the more sudden and general celebrity was the success of one of its proposed experiments made at Marley for drawing lightning from the clouds. This engaged the public attention everywhere. The Philadelphia experiments, as they were called, were performed before the king and court, and all the curious of Paris flocked to see them. Dr. Wright, an English physician, was at Paris when they were the talk and wonder of the day. He wrote to a member of the Royal Society an account of the high esteem in which the experiments of Franklin were held by learned men abroad and of their surprise that his writings had been so little noticed in England. The Society on this resumed the consideration of the letters that had been read to them, and a summary account of their doctrines was drawn up and published among their philosophical essays and transactions. To make Franklin some amends for the slight with which they had before treated him, the Society chose him a member without his having made the usual application. They also presented him with the gold medal of Sir Godfrey Copley for the year 1753, the delivery of which was accompanied by a very complimentary speech from the President, Lord Macclesfield. End of Chapter 11 Recording by Sharon Kilmer, Rio Medina, Texas.